Greetings, my name is Steve Johnson. I work for the Surf Center out of UNC Greensboro, and I'm proud to be leading the Building Engineers in K-5 Classrooms initiative across the state of North Carolina. This micro-credential course is meant for teachers across the state to get started with the engineering design process right in their classrooms. It'll walk you through the steps of the engineering design process, and I'll show you some examples in the classroom, as well as give you a chance to practice the process with your own students. So without further ado, let's get started. So here is the engineering design process. As you can see, there are five separate steps. Ask, imagine, plan, create, and improve. All centered around a challenging task that you give your students in the classroom. Now in this course, we are going to be diving into each of these steps, really talking about best practices, I give you some great classroom examples, and of course, give you a chance to try them with your students in your own classroom. Now a couple things to note about the engineering design process in grades K through five. First thing is that these activities and lessons are aligned to content standards. So this isn't something new or added to your plate, but rather taking the standards we're already teaching and doing them in a more collaborative problem solving way in your classroom. And it is collaborative. So your students are not gonna be working through these tasks individually, but rather they're gonna be working in groups of two to four to really attack a challenging task so that they know what to do as a group to solve a problem. And there will be problems. Uh, so that's one thing that's really a key, car a key component of this is that failure is baked right into these tasks. So these are challenging tasks and we want students as they're in their groups to experience failure along the way. The real important part is that they're learning about what to do whenever things go wrong. So when there's a problem, there's an obstacle, as a team, they have to figure out and think creatively about how to solve it in real time. Those are the types of skills you'll start to see in your students as you do this process with them. Now it's important to note that these, this process can be used with uh, lots of different materials and resources. Uh, schools that have robotics, virtual reality, and other types of equipment, this lends itself directly to those types of equipment. But really, especially, uh, we talk about traditional supplies, things like paper, aluminum foil, tape, uh, things like that that students and teachers are already really um, familiar with. That's a great place to start with this process. And this course starts exactly there. So the course activities that you're gonna be doing uh, really focus on traditional supplies that you already have at your fingertips in the classroom. Now, this aligns really well with our standards across the state. Our digital learning competencies, of course, um, our ISTE student standards, which are adopted in North Carolina. There's a whole strand about innovative designer uh, that really focuses on this type of work. Connects really well to our NC K-12 computer science standards. But again, I want to make this point uh, and underline that this is really focused on our North Carolina standard course of study. So those standards, those ISTE standards and computer science standards are a part of that standard course of study and they're all embedded and integrated when you do this kind of work in your classroom. And really focused on how am I taking the content that I'm teaching already and really making it engaging and building these types of skills in to our students. The next part of our course, we're going to talk a little bit about why it's so important to work on this type of skills in your classroom. 